Hey all my Crimsonites and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel where we embrace our femininity, increase our womanly values, and celebrate our brothers. So join me on our feminine journey to learn, heal, and grow. Happy New Year, everyone. How is everyone doing today? Hopefully everyone had a good time. You were safe. You brought in the new year the way that you wanted to in a good way, positive way. Thank you, Mike Jones, for kicking off the contribution in the new year. First contribution of the new year. Thank you so much. So Crimson, let me start off by saying Happy New Year to you and hubby. Simone Biles have set the bar. 2024 going to be the year of the lioness, hopefully, because I do want to start focusing more on a lioness, but I want to do it from the perspective of um, more so like showing lionesses the how to avoid the pitfall. And we're going to start with this show because this one kind of made me a little bit upset. But what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we have an opportunity to address lionesses for pretty much all of these circumstances that we're going to highlight. But thank you, Steve. Say welcome to the new year. Good sister, everyone in the chat. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And thank you so much, Damien. It's a happy new year. Mrs. Kendra, thank you so much. I appreciate you as well. Um. Okay. Oh. Thank you, Pharaoh said Omar Troll, Vanessa Bryant, and he needs a muzzle. He did. Oh Lord. Anyway, thank you, Miss Face. A happy New Year, Crimson. You are absolutely going. Thank you so much, sweetheart. I appreciate you, Miss Faith. Hopefully, your new year, you bring it in the way that you want it to, and everybody, you know, is doing well with you and yours. Okay. I saw this over the weekend and this particular clip It's from Kendra G and I, and I'm going to, we're going to go through the whole clip this time. Uh, this one actually made me mad. Like the stuff that she was saying, the way in which she was wording things and saying things. I want to point out to lionesses with this. I want the lionesses that it are within earshot of me. Even if it, I want you to use these opportunities upcoming in, the, in this next year with this content to self-examine because we may be lionesses, but sometimes we still have certain traits and certain habits and things of that nature. And while perfection will never be achieved, there is no such thing as perfection. There's always a such thing as sort of introspection and trying to make sure that we're the best version of ourselves that we possibly can be, okay? Um, 
like I said, everybody has habits. Everybody has bad habits and shortcomings and things of that nature. Um, we're not going to be perfect. I don't want anybody to try to strive for perfection because you're going to lose that battle. However, just using certain things to just sort of be able to reflect on what we do and how we operate in our personal relationships. Because today's lesson among many is going to be the manipulation of words that a lot of hyenas love to do. Just the way in which things are stated. Like this one kind of got me heated a little bit. Like I, I got upset listening to her. And I think we're going to get to it. I think she represented for me where or why a lot of times men have trouble trusting anything that women say. Because it's the It's just the manipulation. It's just the manipulation. I, you know, I miss, I missed the super chat. Oh, okay. Clarence, uh, I didn't see it. My apologies. Happy new year, 2024. Congrats on your marriage. I know you have a hubby cracking up laughing. Your roasts are epic. Thank you so much. My apologies for missing your super chat, but I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to uh, waste too much more time. Let's go ahead and get into it. Um, also, kind of shout out. I hope it works for her. Uh, Kendra G is in a relationship. Hopefully, it works for her. I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for. Her. I'm rooting for her and her man. I don't know the details of their relationship, but you know, hopefully, they work out. Um. Okay. So we just going to start from the beginning. Let me, let me be quiet. Here we go. Hello. Thank you, Larry. I can't see your um, face. Because I decided you're going to hate me, but I don't have no clothes on. You don't have any what? Clothes on. Can I grab so a Why are you calling me with no clothes on? Can I grab a t-shirt really quick? Go get a t-shirt. Y'all be calling. Y'all be watching me bucket naked. Y'all don't like to wear clothes, y'all. Y'all just be free watching me, huh? Y'all don't want no clothes on, huh? No clothes, no? No clothes. She had no clothes on. I, I want to know, how, how, how y'all watch me with no clothes on? How you watch me? You don't be cold? Where you live? What, what, what's your name, boo? I'm Jenny. Where you Jenny, where you live, Jenny? North Carolina. So what's the weather in North Carolina? I want to know how y'all can be walking around your house with no clothes on and not be cold. Well, because I have my heat on and I'm comfortable naked. So you was completely naked? No, I had a bra and some shorts on. But that, that feels best for you? Yes. Okay, yes. you just FaceTime people. This is a, this is a FaceTime five, over 5,000 people watching. But with your bra on. Put your FaceTime with your bra on. I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm a little different. I'm sorry. Let me leave you alone. I, well, I, I really do, but I just want to understand the mindset. Because I'm like, how do you push a show that over 5,000 people and more will watch this if I make you a highlight with no clothes on? I would be nervous that if you get selected, they're going to see me bucking naked. That's what happened. Jenny, how old are you? I'm glad. That Kendra said that 
the fact that she even had to say that to a grown woman put some clothes on when you are going to be on video where people can see you why would you hit the button make make the effort to get into Kendra G's back chat with the possibility that she will select you to be next up so that you all can have a conversation and you are sitting there like i ain't really got i'm not really appropriate to the point where you didn't feel comfortable to have your full self in the camera you knew you were too inappropriate to show up properly on this platform and i'm glad that kendra spent the first what two minutes chiding her about what what's the mindset beloved that y'all get on here and she gonna just sit there and look stupid you ought to look stupid but then we have not heard not even the tip of the iceberg with this one honey i'm 34. 34 what you do for a living i'm a nurse nurse you have any kids i have a two-year-old son Okay, why well, you not with the dad? Um, I was a house, he wanted me to be a housewife when we first met and I decided to kind of change and wanted a career and he didn't want that for me. So he gave me an ultimatum and it's to stay at home and be a housewife or leave and have a career. So I left. Girl, girl we want to smack you in the face right now. <laughs> so let me ask you this, was he paying all the bills? He was. So. And did you, when you guys got married, that was the plan? Yes. So basically, you had him, your husband. He was your husband? Mm -hmm. So he was your husband? Yes. You guys had a family? Yes. You agreed to be a stay home yes. mom. What made you want to get a job? Um, when I had to constantly ask for a couple of dollars to do stuff, when it was no, I can't do certain things that I wanted when it was, no, we can't, we don't have enough money to do activities because, you know, one income. And I'm like, well, this is not the lifestyle that I want to live. Like, I just don't want to sit at home and fold clothes and not actually date and have the extra money to do stuff. Like, I just didn't want to fold clothes all day long. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It, it, I understand why other people will like, like, like it and stuff like that. But after like eight years it just wasn't for me i mean i understand I, I i think women should have their own coin to some degree right um i guess was there a conversation about maybe you going to work eventually wait is your child by him yes so when did you guys get divorced a year ago so you got divorced when your baby was one yes and when, well my, my son is uh, he's, he's going to be three he's going to be three Got you, got you. So do you guys co-parent well? We'll leave it at that. So I guess, why was it an ultimatum for you? Why didn't he want you to work at all? He He's just one of those alpha guys who just wanted to lead, wanted to be, he was just one of those type of men. And I, like in the beginning, it was cute, you know, like, okay. And then after a while, it's like, can I have $20? Like, I wasn't, I didn't have a credit card. I didn't have anything. It was like, and he and wasn't so, giving it to you? He, oh, he wouldn't have like a credit card that you could just go to it the was, bank when you wanted to? It was a limit. It was a limit. And the limit was very low. Once again, and I understood why. I understood why. But it just wasn't for me. It, now I'm going to stop her right there. I'm going to stop her right there. Listen to what she's saying. 
It ain't even you. We ain't even got to the good part. I promise you, is that we have not scratched the surface of her story yet. We have, we have not. I promise you, this is the beginning. Okay. He has been with her. She said they have been together for eight years. This was a husband, not a boyfriend, not a sneaky link, not a hookup, not shacking up. This man married her. She, he was upfront with her about who he was, what he wanted, what he wanted in a wife. She agreed to this because she doesn't, doesn't, didn't want to work. She wanted to lay around. She wanted to chill. And he said, okay, you can be a housewife. I will take care of everything. You just be a housewife. Now, mind you, their child is only two going on three. So for about five years, for about five years, there's no child involved. Now, I want us to read between the lines. If you get with a man and you agree to be a housewife with this man, that you don't work, he takes care of all of the bills. That means all of them. If you're not pulling in the income, that means all of them. That means not only the necessity bills, but also peripheral bills. You know, if you got a Netflix bill, you know, he paying that, right? Now, you tell me, and this is a lesson in reading between the lines. This is a lesson about hearing what people don't say, what they try not to say. This right here is what I mean by People tell you who they are. You just got to know what you're listening to. You have to not only listen to what they are saying, you also must listen to what they do not say. Because many times the, the, the heart of the matter is actually in what they didn't say. It's in what they leave out. This is, I'm showing y'all in real time how to actively listen to people. You learn this skill if you're a good listener, if you've ever worked customer service or, or, or customer facing hospitality, if you've ever been in that work field, that's one of the first things they train you on. That's one of the first soft skills they train you on is active listening. Not only are you hearing what the customers say to you, you're also inferring from the things that they did not say. What didn't she say? She said, I'm going to tell you what she said. She agreed when they first got together to be a house wife that he would pay all of the bills that she would not work what she did not say but what you must infer is that he's not broke do we understand that part he may not be making six figures or wealthy but he's making enough money that when she looked at his lifestyle and when he got her a place to stay and he got her the things that she wanted and blah, 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 this was a satisfactory standard of living that he was able to provide. That is what she did not say. Then she got, I need y'all to listen closely, closely. 
Then she says, first she said, I have to have my hand out. Then she says, I didn't even have a credit card. Kendra says, you didn't have a credit card or any means of money, access to the money. She said there was a limit, but it was low. So first second, she didn't have a card. Set next breath, she did have access to a card, but the limit was low. So lies lies then she says because piece together the timeline she said they got divorced a year ago which means that the child is still small this is a this is a special needs child mind you she says he was telling me no because we didn't have that right now. I can't afford that right now. Then she admits out of her mouth, I didn't like that I was being limited, although I understood why. So this was not arbitrary. This is, she's going to try to make it seem like he arbitrarily was controlling her with money. What, but, but. That's not what she said. She said she understood logically why he was telling her no. She just didn't like that the answer was no. It didn't matter that he was giving her a concrete, logical reason why when she would come and ask him for extra money that he would not give her sometimes extra money. The part that she's also not saying is he never, he wasn't just saying no all the time. She had money to spend because she said the limit was low. She was spending that money and then doubling back and asking for more. And the excess money is no longer there like it was Prior to the child. See, the part that we don't know is we understand that the child is special needs because she's going to say that the baby is autistic. What we don't know is the level of that. That comes in, that's levels to that. Sometimes they are truly disabled. Sometimes they are not verbal. Sometimes they are not very expressive or... You know what I'm saying? If you've ever seen or dealt with autistic people, that comes on a scale. Since we don't know that, we don't know if that extra money that he had before they had a kid is now going to the extra needs of the child. Not only is the child in and of themselves an extra uh, financial responsibility, if the child is special needs, we may be talking about extra medical bills. We may be talking about extra therapy bills. We may be talking about extra things to, to, to do or to spend on the child that you may not have had to do with a child that was not special needs. The needs are different. And a lot of times it's financial. It causes financial more financial responsibility he still may this is the other thing that she didn't say she didn't say that their level of living went down i need y'all to hear hear what she did not say she didn't say the level of living went down she said the money got short that's different Because she didn't say, well, we had to downgrade where we were. We went from living in a nice apartment to the hood. We went from having a car to no car. Um, we went from, you know, being able, she wanted to have money to do 
extracurricular activities, the things that they likely were able to do prior to the added responsibility of the child. If your level of living, your standard, meaning the place where you are, the clothes on your back, the type of food that you're eating, the fact that the bills are still paid. So you have not necessarily suffered any loss. There may be a little bit of constriction on, you know, now you've got to count that money rather than, you know, the, the extra 20, 30, 40, 50 dollars you would spend, you then used to be no problem. Now, uh, I got to kind of count that though now. So I can't just give you whatever anymore. Now there is a budget. We don't know what his job was. We don't know if he still had to recover from the pandemic. We don't know what he does or what his money does. She just wants extra money. Let's go back. Oh, before. Before we go back, before we go back, we're going to take a quick, quick break in order to introduce everyone to our brand new sponsor over at ashkicking.com. Okay, listen, if you all are looking for the absolute best in body care, body butter. You need to moisturize your skin. You're looking for one of the best products on the market. Please do not look any further than ashkicking.com. And I love the name. I really, really love the name. I think it's so incredibly catchy, but you definitely will thank them after ordering your order of body butter and you get a 10% off your first order using the promo code crimson. So what I need you guys to do is to go over to ashkicking.com. My mods put the link in the chat. You also are going to find the link in the description box as well. So even after the live stream is over. Don't hesitate at all to go into the description box and hit the link, ashkicking.com, okay? Definitely, you're definitely going to thank them for such a wonderful, wonderful product. Don't forget to put in your promo code if that's your first order, all right? It's a wonderful product. The body butters are awesome. You definitely want to go to ashkicking.com and pick up your order. I know that I need some likes. I don't know how many, but I owe you guys a fam, 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 fam. You got to hit the like button, fam, fam. You got to, eh, 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 okay? So here's the deal. Elder Ben said, this product is the bomb. I recommend it, okay? Definitely, definitely, definitely. He said, Ashy, be gone. Absolutely. Jaleesa said, love Ash kicking. Definitely. You guys definitely want to go and get it. Alma said, yes, Ash kicking is amazing. All right? All right. So, We're going to go back over to Miss Thing. Oh, y'all got to hear it. This wasn't for me. Okay. This is interesting because... I have so many women that are praying for that life. They come on the show, they want a provider, they don't want to work, and that's what they say. And I like to hear this version to the side of the story. Listen, I'm I'm a I come from a career woman. Now I'm a now I'm an entrepreneur. So I believe in having your own money personally. Mm-hmm. Um, so 
I think the challenge becomes, you know, when you get married is what you agree to. But at the same time, you got to honor how you feel. And, you know, I, I wish you guys could have figured out a way to work it out, but I guess you couldn't. No. Okay. Oh, let's keep going. So Jenny, so you're, you became a nurse when? Um, so I was originally was a medical assistant in California and then we moved to North Carolina. Um, and then when we first came out here, maybe about a month into it, we realized it was like a no-go. And then that's when I just started to do like all the programs and certificates and stuff like that. So I've been, um, on it for about a few months now. A few months now. So you white, so so you a home care, you a home care, a home care, a Harriet. You a home care nurse. No shade to home care nurses. Because you ain't even really got to be a nurse to be a home care aide. No shade. Absolutely no shade to that. But she she wiped she wiped bedpans. Okay. She the one that's walk in there with your little plastic cup full of aspirins that you supposed to be taking. She ain't even so good as a phlebotomist. They don't want her around. No needles and taking no blood, baby. A couple of months. So you left your whole husband over money so that you could be by yourself with an autistic child to now pay all of the bills. She said nurse at first and you know, these chicks, this is, this is what I'm talking about, about the wording. Because when she said nurse, when Kendra G first asked her what she does, she said nurse. Now, she failed to add context to that. When these chicks be saying nurse, they want everybody to automatically believe that they are pulling in six figures and things of that nature. It's levels to nursing, beloved. Okay, the bedpan nurse, is not the same as the travel nurse is not the same as the registered nurse not the same as the nurse i forget what kind of nurse it is that assists the surgeon in the surgery and she she hand him the tools and stuff like that that kind of nurse make a lot of money it's levels to nursing beloved every nurse is not pulling in a whole bunch of money That depend on the level of schooling. That depend on where you are. That depend on how long. That depend. Okay. You don't just get to say nurse. And then everybody's supposed to think you make $300,000 a year. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Because I know nurses that are six figures. Okay, and they don't and they don't wipe the bedpan. Those nurses are not wiping no bedpans. Baby, you ain't no better. You standing at the entrance of a clinic with that little uh uh external thermometer putting it on people's forehead and make sure they ain't got COVID fever when they walk in there. Stop playing with me. So since you left your whole husband off the basis of money. Please tell me that your money was doubled. Your income is double his income. Please tell me your income double his income. Please tell me you live better than what you was living with him by yourself. Because if you don't live no better, what you leave for? What you leave for? If you ain't living no better, then she gonna try to say, when Kendra G said, well, do you co-parent well? See, that part made me mad. And she just gonna look down. So you took the man baby from him. So you left him. You switched up. All I'm hearing 
is you switched up because he and you can't do no more listen let me listen let me tell y'all something a person cannot do no more than to be as transparent and as authentic as they and honest and truthful as they can up front with you to be who they are to present who they are you have a choice as to deal with them or not deal with them based on what they present to you based on what they say based on what they do if he was a type of guy she called him an alpha alphas have system order structure we're gonna get to the meat of why she really left okay She's not going to like it that Kendra is going to keep drilling the fact that she had what women be claiming they want. She had that, so you let it go, but for what? She's not going to like it, and she's going to try to make herself seem more of a victim as this conversation goes on. But I promise you this woman is not making double what her husband was making. Because you left for money. What happened to richer and poorer? What happened to the vow? For, for in sickness and in health. Because things happen in life. He may have been making a certain amount of money when you got married. And then, you know, you hit a little patch. And it ain't like he told your whole world up. But things get a little bit more restricted. Money get a little bit tighter, you know, than it used to be a couple years ago. You can't take that. And you study on camera trying to slick down the little short leave out, okay, because it ain't blending good because it's short and you didn't put the proper gel on it. So you study sitting in the, in, the, in the camera doing one of these for the side part. Girl, if you don't knock it off. Okay, if you must know. Okay. What's the zodiac sign? I'm on Aquarius. My birthday is February 7th. Aquarius. All right. So this is Jenny, North Carolina, mom to a two-year-old by her ex-husband. And you're officially divorced, yes. correct? Okay. She's a nurse, 34, Aquarius. All right, well, what kind of man are you looking for now, honey? Um don't hate me for this. But I I want somebody that's a little bit lit and turned up. <laughs> My husband was boring. I know, don't judge me. He was, don't do that. He was super boring. We didn't dance. He didn't like music, like a little ratchet music. He didn't let me wear tight clothes or anything like that. So I kind of want, I kind of want to be a little ratchet with my next suit. A little ratchet. I want him to be fun. I want to go out. I want to be, I want to be the couple that where we laugh at the dinner table, we hug all night, kiss all night, you know, like, just have fun. She says she want a man. Are y'all listening to this chick? See, this is what me and are talking about when, when they say, oh, she just for the street. This is a real life Tia Mowry. This is a, not a celebrity Tia Mowry. This is Tia Mowry syndrome. Says she want to be ratchet. She said that I'm out. You gotta listen to what people are telling you. She trying to say all this other stuff, but she said it. I told y'all that people tell you who they are. If you just listen, all you gotta do is shut your mouth and let them run their mouth. And then they will tell you exactly who they are and what they're about. The only thing that be missing is people either aren't able to hear those things or they um, tell themselves that what they heard, they didn't hear. 
they do plausible deniability with themselves. And that's how you get caught up. And then once things are over, you be like, yeah, I did see those red flags before. I just didn't want to believe them. And it's facts. We ain't got to the worst of it, believe it or not. We didn't dance. We didn't do this. We didn't. She got a conservative type of man that was not ratchet. He, he didn't want her to do certain things because of her. Oh, we going to get into it. I didn't have that. I didn't have that affection in my last marriage. So that's what I want now. My spirit is speaking so loud right now. Yeah. Okay, here's what my spirit is saying. Go ahead. So we call sometimes good men to be boring men, right? And when did you get married? Um, 2020. I'm sorry. How old was you when you got married? I was, shit, I'm 34. I was probably like, I think I was 30. 30, okay. So, so prior to that, did you date a lot? No, not really. Not really. So you had this good ass man. Mm -hmm. Might have been born, but a good man mm -hmm. married you, was your mm -hmm. husband, took mm -hmm. care of all the bills, probably wasn't that lit. Got divorced. Now y'all here in the streets. And you now. As Kendra saying good man, I, she gonna say good man one too many times. And this one is gonna be feeling like, oh, wait a minute. Maybe I shouldn't agree that he's a good man. You about to meet so these rats. Let's hold on. Let's 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 I want to be clear about one thing. He was extremely controlling with when it comes to like, so one of his rules was I can't have long hair because it reminds him of strippers. Another rule was he gave me a rule on how far I can drive away from the house. Um, he also said no social media. He also said no tight clothes, no long nails. Um, he gave me like, he gave me rules. Um, okay, so not a He gave me rules. That's why she don't want him. That's it. That's it. That's why she don't want him. Because he gave her rules. Now, we gonna we gonna talk about wording. The wording of hyenas. He didn't want long hair. It reminded him of strippers. Now, that could mean anything. See, when she says these things, she wants to conjure up in women's minds a certain image, which will, which most will do. Could it be that long hair meant he didn't want her to get that 45-inch, stupid-looking, 60-inch weave that dusts the ground when she walked because that's ratchet? Could it be that's what he didn't want? That 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 could qualify as long hair. See, what she wants everybody to think is that he wanted her bald headed. That's not that's not even what she said. He didn't want her to have the ratchet exterior. Because I don't know why y'all want that long. I don't know why y'all want that. In the first place. That hair. That dusts the ground. Or that come down to your knees. Why do you need all of that foolishness. On your head. Because probably because he refused to pay for it. Because remember he's paying for everything. And he's not going to pay. For that foolishness. I am not giving you. $500 for knotless braids that come to your ankle. I'm not, 
because I don't even want you with knotless braids. Why would why do you have to have hair that come to your ankle anyway? I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Get a regular hairstyle. Get a regular hairstyle. That's all we want. No long nails. She want us to believe that he didn't want her to have no nails. Booty hands. That's not what he said. He, I bet you anything, no long nails mean don't have them raptor claws with all that foolishness on them. That's, that's what he meant. Why am I saying it? I would love to hear his side of the story. Why am I saying that? Because she said things that remind him of strippers. He didn't want stuff that reminded him of strippers. He, i.e., he didn't want her looking like a whore. Not his wife. Not the wife he finna pay for everything for. You can go get your nails done. But why you got to come out with six inch claws? Who eyes you finna dig out? What? Why are we doing that? Just get your nails done. Get your, your hands free. I'm sure he's the type of guy that wanted a woman to beautify. But you can beautify without doing all this other stupid stuff. You can beautify without that. No social media. But, but what you're going to hear her say is that she's the type of woman that don't even like social media to begin with. Now, mind you, she got a whole Instagram. Didn't bother putting her Instagram up there. But if you the type of chick that's not all into social media and he just say, well, good, don't have it, why you getting mad? How far I can drive from the house. I bet you that wasn't about distance. That was about you can't go to certain places. I don't want you at certain places. All of that is system order and structure that a man is going to put down. I should give me more context. I'm going to take good man out because that's some crazy shit right there. That's some crazy shit right there. So, hell no. Can't nobody agree to any of that. I had, to fight him, but I, I had to fight to be friends with my best friend because he said I can't have any friends. I wasn't married. And I'm just like, that's crazy. Like, he thinks everybody that's not married is just the wrong type of crowd to be with. I don't know. It was just. Didn't want her to have the single ratchet friends. He didn't say no friends. He didn't say you couldn't talk to anyone. He didn't say you couldn't, he didn't, he just said your little single thotting ratchet thought bot friends, your little thought pocket friends. No. Listen real careful what she's saying. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's too controlling. What I was going to say was sometimes women lose, leave the good guys for these ratchet men and the ratchet men <laughs> come with a lot of shit, you know, so the ratchet man, he might be kissing up on him and then he might be kissing up on somebody else. Yeah. You want to be out here lit with it, but I will say more with more context of your ex-husband. No, I don't think anyone wants to be married to a person like that. Right. Okay. right. So right. I, 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 now, I, why I, did I, she put that, that out there? She did all of that. She said all of that to do exactly what she just did to get Kendra and the rest of the women on her side. All of the stuff that she had said up to that point wasn't making her look like the victim good enough. She wasn't, she was turning out looking like the bad guy, looking like the one that was the problem in the relationship. So now since Kendra was catching on 
to the fact that you're the problem in this relationship, she had to turn that around and be like, no, 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 he was the problem. So then she had to come up with all of these different things. Half of it is probably a lie. That man is not here to say what his uh what what the what the issue is or what his side of the story was or anything like that. We don't know what he was doing or not doing. We are only getting her half baked side of the story which may or may not have any truth to it. And if there is any truth to it, it's probably turned all the way around, that kind of stuff. So she did what she she wanted to do. She achieved what she wanted to achieve. She did not want to, Kendra to say that if he was a good man and she left him. So she had to make it where he's not a good man and she was justified in leaving because everything these hyenas do got to be justified she's justified in in breaking her marriage and her family and then they want to get on social media and act like the men are leaving and making them single moms and leaving the families and leaving them destitute and all of this other type of stuff but they are the ones that willingly willfully and eagerly break their own relationships crazy yeah it was just too good so to me when i say ratchet i just i really mean that loosely like in the sense of just someone more fun that's it just more fun don't give me crazy rules um and just want to get to know each other like love me for me like that's what i meant like i don't mean like i <laughs> i don't want to be naked on top of a table and you cheering me on i don't want that but I do want somebody that grabs my hand, let me get up, and let's dance in the middle of the floor. Like, let's enjoy life together. Okay. You know, that's it. I understand that. Someone said, why did you get married? Was he controlling in the beginning? I got married, honestly, to, to, to be honest, I was depressed and I was going through a lot. Um, so he kind of like saved me from that. And I fell in love with that. Um, when I stopped being depressed and I got on my feet and I want a career, and I wanted just to do something other to be other than being a housewife. That was the biggest no no. And we kept butting heads, kept butting heads. Um, it was times where he just he just didn't like it. He just did not like it. And he just told he just flat out told me. Okay. And it's just like, well, I gotta go. Okay. Right, she gotta go. Did you hear what she said? That's the part I wanted y'all to get to. That's why I kept saying we're not even at the meat of it. Now, the man that she, I need y'all to understand how these, how these females behave. She married this man because the very system, order, and structure that he provided for her that she's complaining about now is the system order and structure that saved her from herself he saved her from depression the system order structure the rules the things that he provided for her that were both tangible and intangible was something that she absolutely needed. And she married him because that's what he did. Now, she said it out of her mouth. When I got on my feet, when I was no longer depressed, when I no longer needed him, when I flip-flopped, when I switched up, I, I was there for as long as, he, as I needed to be for him to be my crutch and rely on him for the things that I needed and, 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 and needed him to do. Once that was done, once that was completed, once I felt good enough,
Once I got out of the hole of depression, he wasn't good enough for me anymore. I wanted a, another man. I wanted a better man. I want to hit these streets and do what I want to do with a man that is not going to give me system, order, and structures anymore. This man saw me in my worst state. He married me in that state. He cleaned me up. He taught me how to be a proper woman. Since I was depressed, I did not want to work. He saved me. I was able to live a pretty good lifestyle without lifting a finger. He provided everything that I needed. And when I could no longer uphold, under the weight of simple system. That, that sounds like a simple SOS. Simple SOS. To bring order to me. I flipped out. And I broke our relationship. In order to justify breaking the relationship. I now have to present that relationship to hyenas, other hyenas that would ask me as a man that was controlling and she almost saying he's abusive. He was abusive to her. Do you hear the level of manipulation that this woman just said she did and she don't want nobody to say she was the problem ma'am you used that whole man you didn't even want that kid the kid is was just something that happened that, that, that ain't what you after now that you're not in the pit of depression and you're feeling yourself you don't need him no more He's not good enough no more. He's a straight lace. He's a lame. He corny. He boring. But that straight lace, lame, corny, boring dude is the dude that you needed when you couldn't do for yourself. Now that you feel like you can do for yourself, now all of a sudden you want some dude that you can get lit with and Kendra trying to tell you that that comes with another set of problems. That kind of guy that you left a husband for that you now want comes with his own set of BS that you're going to have to deal with. You're going to be complaining again because he's going to be lit he gonna, listen, listen, let me tell you something. Them the very ones that cuddle up with you and all this other kind of stuff because he ain't got time to do nothing else. All he got time for is to be in your face and up under you and give you all of his attention because he does not have any purpose or vision or system or structure to pay attention to above you. And I guarantee you, you're going to get around that guy. It's going to be cool for two seconds. And then you're going to be disrespecting him and not liking him because he doesn't do anything. Because he's not stable. Because he doesn't give you any money. Because he doesn't provide this and he doesn't provide that and he doesn't do this and he doesn't do that. All he do is come through, break your back cuddle up under you, tell you all kind of stuff you want to hear that appeals to your chaos as a female. And then he, he's saying that same thing to about five other women, all y'all stupid, and you're going to end up having a baby by him because the type of guy that you are trying to go after does not have the patience nor the time nor any interest in taking care of you as a as a as a woman and certainly not some other man's special needs autistic child that he now has to have some type of patience for because girl if you don't not
So we were in your um, requirements. You want to do you have any more requirements before we go to your deal breakers? Um, I really don't. I really don't. Just like the basic what we all want, you know, nice teeth, um, dress, have your own swag, whatever that is. Um, oh, I like a, I like a guy that leads. I want you to leave. I want you to leave. I don't, don't always tell me to uh, make the dinner plans. Don't always, when we're walking, walk in front of me. You know, I like that sweet guy. That's okay. it. Let's do the Kendrick. You do not want a man to lead. You just left a man because of his leadership. She left her husband because of leadership. She can't follow leadership. She doesn't like men that have system order and structure. She don't like leadership. You left your husband because he was telling you to do stuff. Because he was taking the lead over you. You left him because you did not like his leadership. You didn't like how leadership tastes. Don't like how it look. You didn't like how it felt. News flash. Even though men have various leadership style, at the end of the day, leadership is leadership. And if he's doing it properly, then he's going to, you're going to feel a sense of control that he has over you. That comes with the territory of leadership. Because he cannot be responsible for you to the level that you want him to be responsible to you or for you, for your well-being, for your living, for your very existence. He's going to have to exercise some level of authority and control over the things that you do and places that you go and all of this type of stuff. And most men, most men are not even super strict. You should, most of the stuff that they want, you should already be doing anyway, because what wife does want to be out at all hours of the night time of day? What wife does want to be all in these single folks faces as they go out and club and thought and do whatever single people do. You're no longer in that realm. Most men's system order and structure is not that difficult to follow. You telling me that this man wasn't like that when you met him? Yes, he was. Because when Kendra asked that, she didn't say, oh, he changed. She didn't say he changed. She said she changed. All that anybody can do is be who they are when you meet them. This man seems like he was 100% transparent and upfront with who he was and what he wanted. You, you agreed to him. Now you want to complain about him, but he didn't change. He been the same man he was. He been that same man. Y'all getting in these relationships and you think these men are going, you get, see y'all hyenas like to get into marriages with alpha lions because you like the SOS, because you like the outcome of his system order and structure. You like his outcomes. You like the outcome of it, but you don't like the work that you need to contribute in order to have the outcome this is, and this is what separates the hyena from the lioness because we like the outcome too but we really to work with him in order to achieve the outcome that we like lionesses will put themselves under proper leadership and guidance we will do it and we'll be happy with it we know what we signed up for. You don't think I know what I signed up for with my husband? I know I know who he is. 
All I had to do was get a good sense of what kind of leader he was and stuff that he wanted and how he would operate and things of that nature. I needed a good sense of his mindset, his worldview, how he saw things, how he maneuvered. Once I got a good grasp of that, the, the main question I asked myself that and that all lionesses should ask themselves before committing into a relationship is, can I do that forever, potentially? Can I always do this? Can I always follow this leadership? Is this the type that's going to wear me down after a while? Or is this something I can keep up? It, it, do it just, is it just something that look good, feel good for now? And it's, I can't do it later? These are the questions that lionesses ask themselves. I asked myself this before me and Unc got married. Can I always be in my role as his wife to support his vision and purpose. Can I always do it? Do I believe that I have it within me re reasonably and be truthful? Because if you don't, you will waste everyone's time and you'll break his heart. But hyenas don't care about breaking nobody's heart and wasting nobody's time. <sighs> Do not get into these relationships with these men. If you don't like order and you don't like men saying nothing to you, stay out of relationships. Deal with the F-19s. Deal with the scum bucket, scumbag, nothing to do, nothing to do today, day, F boy dudes that ain't got nothing to do but sniff up under you all day. And don't complain. I don't want to hear the belly aching about he ain't about nothing and he don't do nothing. Because that's what you wanted. You want a dude that ain't about nothing and don't do nothing. Oh, Jesus. Okay. I have one. I do want a big t shirt. Let me make sure my. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. We'll see. Oh, you got a nice shape. Oh, somebody going to love that you like to be in the house naked. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> She said yeah. this earlier. She likes to walk around um, with no mm -hmm. shirt on. So that was her. Yeah. That, I love. I know. I know. I know. Every it's a it's a bad habit. I sleep asshole naked. I walk around with no clothes on. Well, you mean I'm, I'm quite sure your man won't have a problem with it. No, I'm quite sure he won't. All right, so here we go. This is Jenny, North Carolina, 34. What's the age range you would date, honey? Um. Oh Jesus. I want to say 29 all the way up to like 45, 50. 29 and 40. look good. Nice body, but. Okay, 29 My, my ex-husband was 40. Oh, so. was okay, do you want more kids? <sighs> Don't hate me for this, but I, I said no to the first one. Love my son, but I said no to the first one. So I don't want any more kids. You can have kids. I can love them like they're mine. Okay. Did you hear what she said? I told you she, I told you she didn't want that baby. The baby was just something that happened. The baby was just just happened. The baby just happened. She said I didn't I said no to the first one. She just knew she better not have went to go get no deletion. Because that don't seem like she was married to the type of man that was going to tolerate no deletions of his seed. Not of his. So she would have deleted it had she had an opportunity to. This is the type of female that we're dealing with here. 
It's the type of has she had an opportunity and the money to delete that first baby, she'd have done that. Exactly, babe. So I'm starting to think when they say they want a man with leadership means they want a man to argue with. So when you tell her to do something, she can be combative. Exactly. That, that's what they be wanting. Just I want a man so I can not do what he want me to do. She don't want any more kids. Okay. Um, what was your was your marriage or last relationship? Yes. Okay. You don't have to answer, but I'm gonna ask. When's the last time you was intimate with someone? Like three weeks ago. Who oh, this man? Um, um, I don't know. I think we both was just. You don't know who the man was? She already. She already hoeing. She already hoeing. Huh? 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 She already, she already home. Three weeks ago, I don't know who he was. He is, but I think we was just like, I think we fed off of our loneliness. Like, he was complaining that his wife died two years ago. I was the plan and I was lonely. We was nice to each other. So we had a good time. So is he out of the for something more just like real? He, he okay. He can be an option for something real. When I stopped by his house, uh, he still had all of his wife's stuff like untouched. It was still everywhere. And I was just like, I'm not going to do that to him and put that type of pressure on him. So maybe he's not ready to really transition over to really date something serious. So. Okay. Bring the phone up. I hear like it's, it's um, crackling a little bit. So, so that's why you can't do nothing real with him. No, I don't think he's ready. I don't think he's ready. And I don't want to put this type of pressure on him in a sense of like, you know, pack up your wife's shit. How do you say that to someone who wife? <laughs> I know, so I don't want to say that, and I don't want to do that. So I'm like, you know what? It was nice, and when you're ready, you know, call me when it's gone. Call you when it's gone. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, Jenny. Uh, what are three flaws you have to work on? Oh, three flaws. Okay. One of them is oh, Jesus Christ. Um, if you want to go there with me in arguments I would take it there so I don't know how to walk away like you know if you're like bitch I'm like your mama and I know I know I know I'm working on that I'm working so now we get to the interesting part the first flaw she said if you go into an argument with me I go there so she does not de-escalate anything she has zero communication skills she has zero de-escalation skill. She has zero con uh, conflict resolution skills. She does not resolve conflict. She want to argue. She want to get ratchet. She want to have that toxic type of social media relationship. Exactly. Said, so boom, there it goes. What I told you, she just want to argue. She want to argue. She wants somebody to argue with. She wants them. That that her ex husband was too good for her. You too good. He don't want to argue. That's why. That's why. That's why he his system order and structure was like that for her. I bet you another woman. He would not have that kind of structure for her. He took away everything that she could argue about. And she still found something. How you argue somebody about taking care of you. 
How do you argue as somebody about taking care of you when they completely 100% take care of you? When they pay for every little thing, even down to the little stuff, they pay for it. You don't lift a finger. All he wanted you to do was be a mom and be a wife. If you want to be a thought, do it in the house with him. You, you want to walk around naked and thought it up and clap your booty? It ain't nothing wrong with a good old booty clapping session at your house with your man. It ain't nothing wrong with a good old booty clap session, especially if you know how to do it. I mean, if you don't go in there and put that thong on and shake that thing, go, please, by all means, do it with your husband. She want to do it with everybody. And that's the problem. He was too good for her. When I say she was too good for her, he behaved too well for her. He be, His behavior, was, he did conflict resolution. He wasn't into all that useless, needless arguing and back and forth and, 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 and chaos and, and foolishness and arguing. He wasn't into all of that. We're going to resolve these conflicts. We're going to. Oh, listen to her other flaws. Working on that. Um, my second one is if I can pull up my work schedule, I work 16 hours, 16 hours, 16 hours. I try to stack, I try to save, and I want to participate in my next relationship. So that can be a flaw, I guess. And then my last one is, uh, I'm, a, I'm a little materialistic, a lot materialistic. Yeah, that can be a flaw. A lot, a lot materialistic. Oh, okay, and why would a guy be lucky to be with you, sweetheart? Did you hear she told you why she was the problem in her relationship. She argued. She don't want to contribute to the relationship with money. She wants to take the leverage from the man. And she want to be able to say, I don't need you. So you, can, you can't tell me because Negro, I don't need you no way. I got my own. She want to be able to do that. Throw that up in your face every 15 uh, minutes. And then she wants to be super materialistic. So that means she want to work and save her money and spend all of your money. Boom, that is. And, and all the while, she don't want you to give her no no orders. She don't want you to be trying to tell her nothing here and there, and making no system and making no rules for her to follow. She wants you to do let her do whatever she want to do, whatever it is that occurs to her mind to do. You supposed to be okay with it. At the same time, you supposed to be this masculine leadership dude that don't take no crap, but you supposed to say her crap. So she can disrespect you later on because you now she gonna think you simping because you take all her crap. But she was with a man that wasn't taking her crap because notice in the beginning he she said he gave her the ultimatum: you stay here, you do what you agree to do. Or we gonna do this marriage, or you can go. Bye. And she left. Okay.
a little bit more insight into the type of person she is. Oh, she was the problem. Um, I mean, I got a kind heart. I will give you the world. Um, I will participate in our relationship. I will be as loyal as you want me to be. And I can meet you halfway. I can meet you halfway and I can get to know you and know what you like and then try and be that perfect person for you if you give me a chance. I'll be a chameleon in your life. She said, I'll be as loyal as you want me to be. That's not how loyal people talk. Because when you loyal, you say, I'm loyal. When you're a chameleon, you say stuff like, I'll be as loyal as you want me to be. That means I'll, I'll be a chameleon and I'll do what you want in your face. I will be the woman that you want me to be while I'm in your face, while you're looking. I will fake with you and front and cap about what kind of woman I am in order to try to secure a relationship like I did the first time. And then we'll just see if whether I change my mind or not. I will because I'm a chameleon. I'm faking. I'm not going to be who I really am because if I am who I really am, I'm not going to be able. I know that that woman does not secure stable uh, relationships. So what I want to do is have some type of stability that I can try to take advantage of. So what I'll do is I'll cap and I'll play in your face the way that you want me to. That's what she said. I'll play in your face how you want me to play in your face. However you want me to play in your face, that's how I'm playing your face. You want me to play in your face? Because I played in the last guy face like I was going to be a housewife. I'm not really a housewife. I can play in your face for an undisclosed amount of time until I'm bored with playing in your face then i'll break that off so i'll just play in your face that's why you lucky to have me because i'll play in your face nicely okay let's do it do you want to get married again i do i do i do please okay Get in the DMs, cause yes, let's do this. Let's see what it looks like. Let's let's go ahead and try it. Sorry. So you want, but you want a fun marriage this time. I do. I want a fun. I want a fun. Please be relaxed. Please don't give me all these rules. Can we meet in the middle? Please give me time to adjust. Just give me that. That's all I'm asking for. Time to adjust, because I've got to figure out how exactly you would like for me to play in your face. See, I don't know that from the beginning. See, chameleons need time to learn how to play in your face. We're going to skip forward just a tad. Okay. So a couple of things. Don't be controlling. Come to me. Appreciate the presence. And please like, kids. Presence. please like kids. I have a two-year-old son about to be three. He's artistic. He's artistic. And I need that like sometimes I need somebody to talk to um so, so I don't know my Instagram name it's like I don't know it's like love oh, life I y'all I don't I'm gonna read. reach out to you I can't read it you got to read it to the people we're talking I, about it. I don't know I don't know my Instagram name I'm not on Instagram like that I'm not well, on do you have a Facebook how do you want the man to reach out to you sweetheart I don't have a Facebook <laughs> You came up I know I'm no one of those phone. girls. I'm one of those girls that don't have a Facebook, don't have social okay, media. Okay, that's fine. Are you familiar? Okay, so here, what was your plan when your interview was over I, to give your contact? I thought that honestly, truly, because I watch you all the time, and sometimes I can tap up and just click on the Right, line. but here's the deal. That's when you're live. If your highlight is not going to be up there. That's why you have to say it, because if I make you a highlight, a person can't click up. This is in the past. If it's right. right now, we in the present, we in the, we live. Hey, but if it's a highlight, this is a past video, which means they can't. Kids, 
honey. Hey, you ain't gonna be so aggressive with me, baby. I got I'm to sorry. Be with you, Jenny. Shit. <laughs> you are so assertive, aggressive, Kendra. Dang. I'm just trying to figure out. You came up here to find a man, but you don't gotta wait. Just like meeting a man and saying, "Oh, I don't have no number for you to call me." How's he supposed to reach out to you? Um. It's love life. I know it's love life. Okay, I'm someone sorry. say okay, so someone pins it. Let's try to get this together. It's love okay, so it's at and I'm gonna stop. I wanted to get to that last part where she said, Don't be so aggressive in with me. That was aggressive. She don't like no order, nothing. She don't like anything. Kendra was Kendra was not being aggressive with her. She was a set. Okay, what was your what was your plan? You you don't know your Instagram. You ain't got no Facebook. Yet. What what was he supposed to do? Send a, a, a smoke signal to you and hope you see it. What what was supposed to send a pigeon to you? We was gonna strap a pigeon to you to a note to a pigeon leg and send it over there. What send it where? What what is you doing? How was that aggressive? You ain't gotta be so good. Since she don't want no. She don't want nobody to say nothing to her in no type of way. Almost 100% of them arguments in her household with her. Anytime that man said something to her, it don't matter how he said it. She didn't like it. If it even so much as sound like he might have been telling her something rather than begging and asking and 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 and, and groveling to get her to do it as soon as he put any type of authority in his voice with her she went off somebody said he got a Send a uh, he got to send a wave into West Ross. You know, he got to send a wave into the Meisters of Westeros. Yeah, he got to send, you know, one of the ravens to uh, to the wall to Master Amon. so he could decipher it. Solutions and advice, and this is going to go towards the lionesses. Watch your words. What am I saying? Watch how you phrase things. It is a part of us as women. We, we, and I wrote about this in my book. We manipulation is a part of the chaos of female nature. Okay. We will finesse and manipulate stuff. We manipulate energies. We manipulate situations, things of that nature. We can redirect certain things to go a certain way. That is a part of our female nature. That is a part of how that's our power okay men can do things by brute strength physical strength physical threat physical they can do things they can physically uh, uh, make sure that certain things get done okay women we have to finesse stuff to get things that we want done because we cannot physically demand things or make people do stuff through physical means 
Okay. So we will finesse our way through life. That is a natural thing to do. What's not natural is to use it, to use that ability to hurt people, to hurt situations, to create harmful situations, negative situations, to create negativity between people, enmity between people, and generally make negative things out of it. We are supposed to be using that ability to bring positive outcome. For instance, using your femininity to ask your husband to bring you something, some something you want. I don't know, from the store, whatever. You ask nicely, you bat your eyes, hey, you think you can stop and do, uh, just please. That is a form of using your feminine energy to guide and sort of get the stuff that you want out of him. It is the opposite thing of saying, Negro, go out to the store and get this thing and don't come back unless you got it. See, because you can't make that kind of demand. You can't physically enforce it. So you can't make demands in that way. You can't make demands. You have to You have to do that. The lioness understands the use of her ability to finesse, her ability to be soft, her ability to do these things for a positive outcome. The lioness does not use her ability to do this to create negative con, uh, uh, negative interactions, negative situations, to produce negative energy and negative outcomes. We don't use it to start arguments. We don't use it to set people against one another and things of that nature. We don't use it in order to set people up so that they can be not at odds and all of this other type of stuff. An example of setting people up, manipulating and setting people up to do things, to create negative income is like that Dominique lady that, um, Dominique Jones that lied on Travis Rudolph and had that man in jail and in court because she finessed, she manipulated her brother. She manipulated his friends. She put on an act. She lied. She played victim. She cried wolf. She did everything that she needed to do in order to get them whipped up into a frenzy to get an outcome that she wanted, which was to have Travis hurt or deleted. That is a prime example of manipulating people and situations for negative outcome. So she weaponized, she weaponized the fact that she was a female and the fact that, you know, all this other type of stuff, all she weaponized her brother's love for her. She manipulated that.
And it did ultimately end up in somebody getting deleted. And Travis Rudolph spent time behind bars unjustly. Watch your words, lionesses. Watch how you tell stories. Watch how you relay information. Because the reason I was saying all of this stuff about manipulation is because we have to be able to tell a blunt truth, an actual truth, not my truth, the truth about things, particularly to our families, to our husbands, we have to be 100% truthful and honest with them. Don't omit important information that is necessary to him. Over-exaggerations, understating or overstating things in order to derive a particular outcome or to have someone to sort of twist how someone perceives things. It is okay, Lioness, for you not to be the victim all the time. It's okay for you not to be a victim all the time. Lionesses do not practice victimhood. We do not have to be the victim all the time. Because you're not a victim all the time. If there is a situation where we must take accountability, take it. This is what sets you apart from the hyena. Take accountability when there's accountability to be taken. Sometimes you're not going to look too hot on the other end of it. It's okay. Because most of the time, men appreciate the fact of the accountability for decisions made and things of that nature if they were not the best decision, they didn't end up in the best outcome. You say, yeah, I messed up with that. I, I, I did mess up with that. They have a tendency to be much more lenient on how they were, were going to deal with whatever the situation is and all that kind of stuff. If you just take accountability for it, they can work with that. You can't work with people that don't take accountability for nothing. You can't work with people that every word out of their mouth is a way to gaslight and manipulate and turn the story and control the narrative, all this kind of stuff. Nobody can trust you. You become untrustworthy. You may not be telling outright lies, but you're certainly not telling the truth either. There is an in-between. This society has women thinking that we can never be accountable because we look bad in front of the world. Everybody has a time where they're not at, in the best light. That's my solution and advice segment of the show. Let me get to the super chats. Thank you, District Kurtz. I finally caught you live. I really appreciate listening to someone that talks from a sound, rational perspective. Keep it up. Also, check out my music, guys. I'm decent. Okay, thank you, uh, District Kurt, for your contribution. Thank you so much.
Thank you, Lucky Lefty. Said, what up, Kendra? I've come to realize women like her believe their lives are infinite, like doing a trick for Contra years ago. Not a Contra game. Thank you, Terenzo. Said, that's the very same philosophy KS was pointing out to people to be presentable at all times, and these hyenas lost their minds over it. Sad thing is, it's very basic military co uh, customs, courtesy, and etiquette. Thank you so, so very much, sweetheart. Thank you, Mark, said woman math spin, man math budget. Thank you, Jared, said so he could afford her to stay home and because she can't go on hot girl, uh, she left to still be on one income. Child was her way to exit and take his. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you, Chris, I said thank you for your work. Thank you so much. Thank you, Classy, said the medical field has rankings like the military. Thank you, John, said she said I'm a nurse. The way a guy that plays in a church league says I'm a basketball player. Uh, right. Thank you, HVAC says she told on herself. This is why Password Bros have blown up the way it has. She left because she's bored. Thank you, uh, Mark Cooper said another child support sucking 304 wannabe fool from a good man. Put this one's picture in the dictionary as the 304 definition. Thank you, Devon, for your super sticker. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, Mark. Said he gave you structure and financial discipline and his preference. Thank you once again, Johnson. Long weave and nails make Junior easy to identify, make it easy to identify trash. Thank you, Black Goku. Said the mistake he made was trying to turn a hyena to a housewife. These hyenas hate me with boundaries and standards. Exactly. Exactly. Here's what I want to say to that. Because she was the problem in a relationship. We saw that. Fellas, and and this go for this go for women too. Don't never get in relationships with depressed people. Don't do it. If they tell you or show you that they are in depression, they are not fit for the relationship. That don't mean they're a bad person. It's just that certain things that depressed people go through, they may need support, but they are not in the emotional space to hold up their end of a relationship they're not in that place they're barely holding on for themselves now if they get out of depression and you know what i'm saying things of that nature and they heal and stuff like that and they and they you know they good to go then by all means you know get you can get into a relationship but when they really depressed like a whole lot when it's really really depressed it's not a good idea to get them into serious relationship because, like I said, emotionally, they are not really able to provide their end of the relationship. Um, thank you, Quinn, for your super sticker. I appreciate you as well. Classy perspective said, uh, and thank you so much. Said she's thirty years old. Want to get her three hundred four vibes out before she converts to a into an old single six hundred eight. Not the doubling of the numbers. Uh, thank you, skinny boy. Said Miss Kendra, please remove Bella's wrench. She said he tried to tame a street possum. Miss <laughs> Bella in here clowning. <laughs> thank you, Mark. Says she had no father. Thank you once again, Johnson. Hermit crab uses shell. Now on to the next. Thank you, Your Excellence. So you attracted both me and Siobhan. Our sons hear you vibrating in their ears, and I'll continue to allow that. We follow the truth over here, Siobhan. Say, hey, hey, Siobhan, and blessings to your family and blessings to yours as well. Thank you so much. Thank you again to Renzo. Say, ratchet is fun. Words cast spells. When people say these words, think of changing the meaning works, but they're still under the spell, the etymology of the word fun. Folks, go read it. Thank you, Marks, and Power by Social Media. They want... 
the Powerball man. Thank you, comments. So you sound like you're talking about my mother. My mother had three kids already, but she had me and two others in. When things got good, she left and married a white man. My father got mom a house. Mm. Thank you, Professor Carl Tone. So I've been there before, minus the child of the marriage. That brother dodged a major bullet. He needs to get full custody of your child and thank the streets for reaccepting her application for the streets, not an application. Thank you, Mark, again. So called James Ryan. He paid a cost to be the boss. Thank you once again. Comment said, after my mother left my father for the white guy, she took us from our father. This was in the 70s. Then left the white guy. My father took me and my two brothers back. My mother hit the streets again. Uh, thank you, Quinn said, we should call F-Boys F-14 Tomcats because Tomcats perfectly described them. Thank you. Uh, again, comment said, to make a long story short, my mother ended up deleted by one of her pookies. He stabbed her in the neck over a $320 lottery ticket in 1987. That's why my family fight for our kids. Wow. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, thank you, Xavier. said, desperate for approval from Sarah Jane and Mary. Desperate for attention from every Tom, Dick, and Harry. Exactly. Thank you, the International Quiet Storm. So this is exactly why she called her ex-husband controlling because Kendra tell her rules, structure, and order of a platform. Now Kendra is controlling too. Thank you, Mr. Donnie Max, that autistic son needs to go to his father for the boy's security and development. The boy is not safe with this woman. My younger brother is autistic, and I wouldn't dare bring women like her near him. Thank you, International. So this is why we need more Kendra D's, less Kendra D's in 2024. Thank you, Miss Lee. Say, hey, big sis. Uh, happy New Year, family. Have an update since our conversation. Need a one-on-one -on -one ASAP. Sent a message on your website. Um, okay. The best way to really, though, get in touch with me is through my email, though. Somebody post my email so that anyone with the desire to do a one-on-one, -on -one, you can definitely hit me on my email and we can arrange that. Thank you, James Mitchell. Say, hey, family, I need prayer. I had a very bad stroke a day before, uh, three days in the hospital. I came through with all my body functions. All the doctors were in total surprise. I was walking, talking normal. The Lord was with me. Thank Oh, wow. Okay. Prayers up for James. And thank you so much, sweetheart. Um, the I have never uh, been around anyone close that has had a stroke, but I've seen the outcome of them. And so, therefore, I am very, very thankful that you came out with your body functions intact because sometimes people do not, uh, they don't. They can't do it afterwards. So thank you so much for your contribution and definitely prayers up for you and your health recovery, a full recovery. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, J-Doll. So she the type to go on prison website looking for a good man. She'll be, she going to love and lock up. That's where she going. <laughs> All right. Let's see about the cash apps. M, oh, wait, a uh, U-M. Thank you so much for your cash app. I appreciate you. Um, so we're going to go ahead and wrap this up, uh, jump down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. If you have not, once again, I'm your hostess, the Crimson Cure, and this was my perspective. Bye-bye, Crimsonites.